Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. After years of conflicts, King Agamemnon of Mycenae unifies the kingdoms of ancient Greece, bringing them into a loose alliance under his leadership, with only the kingdom of Thessaly left unconquered. Agamemnon leads his army towards Thessaly in an attempt to conquer it and add it to his ongoing list of conquests. Triopas, the king of Thessaly, makes an agreement with Agamemnon to avoid open combat and prevent further unnecessary bloodshed by allowing the strongest fighter from each side to determine the conflict's outcome. Triopas then summons the giant Boagrius, his best warrior. Agamemnon, in response, calls upon Achilles, a warrior considered a demigod, gifted with superhuman strength and agility, but the legendary hero is nowhere to be found. Indignant, Agamemnon orders a messenger to retrieve him. Achilles, in his mind, is determined to follow his own path and become famous in history rather than join Agamemnon, whom he despises as a king. Nevertheless, he decides to fight a few battles for him for now. He arrives on the battlefield in his armor and strides firmly toward his opponent, dodging his opponent's spears and defeating him without further issues, securing Agamemnon's dominion over Thessaly. King Triopas, clearly impressed by Achilles' skills, then hands him the scepter of Thessaly to deliver to his king, Agamemnon, but Achilles exclaims that he has no king and walks away. Meanwhile, as distinguished guests, Prince Hector of Troy and his younger brother Paris sit in the dining hall of King Menelaus of Sparta while discussing a peace agreement. However, Paris sneaks away to be with Helen, the stunning wife of Menelaus, as they are having an affair. After doing what they shouldn't, Paris persuades Helen to return with him to Troy. Hector, who is suspicious of his younger brother's relationship with Helen, threatens Paris, stating that if he puts Troy in danger, he will take his beautiful face off his pretty skull. While sailing back to Troy, Paris, despite Hector's warnings, reveals to Helen that he had hidden her on board. Hector is obviously upset with his younger brother's actions, but it is too late to return Helen to Sparta and seek forgiveness. When Menelaus learns of this, he meets with his elder brother, Agamemnon, and asks for his help in seeking revenge by fighting against Troy, the supposedly impregnable city. Agamemnon willingly accepts his brother's proposal, as victory over Troy would allow him to dominate the Aegean Sea. Odysseus, king of Ithaca, receives instructions from Agamemnon to persuade Achilles to help them take Troy. He finds Achilles training with his inexperienced young cousin Patroclus. Despite Odysseus' assurance that this war and its heroes will never be forgotten, Achilles initially refuses to go. However, after visiting his mother, Thetis, a sea nymph, who assures him that even if he dies in the war, his name will be remembered forever, he finally decides to fight, but only so that his name will be remembered. Hector, Paris, and Helen are warmly welcomed back to Troy by their Trojan compatriots and by King Priam, Hector and Paris' father. Paris introduces Helen to his father, who accepts her and praises her beauty. Hector's baby son and wife, Andromache, are also reunited with him. In a conversation with his father, Hector believes they will not be able to win the war, but King Priam reassures him, saying they can with the help of the gods. The Trojans prepare for the impending battle outside the walls of Troy. Troy is considered impregnable due to the thick, tall wall protecting the city. Agamemnon and his vast army are approaching the beaches of Troy, escorted by Achilles, who has also brought his own men, the fierce and feared Myrmidons, and his cousin Patroclus. Concerned for Patroclus' safety, Achilles orders him to stay on the ship and watch, despite Patroclus' desire to join the fight. Before the campaign, Achilles rallies his troops with enthusiasm, Hector does the same, and both advance toward the beaches of Troy with their armies. As the Myrmidons are faster rowers than Agamemnon's army, they are the first to reach the shores of Troy. Achilles and his Myrmidons play a significant role in the final invasion of the Greeks onto the Trojan coast. Achilles and his men single-handedly defeat the Trojan warriors in their path to the Temple of Apollo and order its destruction. Disregarding the warning of Uterus, the leader of the Myrmidons, not to anger the gods, Achilles decapitates the statue of Apollo in an act of rebellion. To repel Agamemnon's army, Prince Hector launches an attack. As he approaches the Temple of Apollo, Achilles and his Myrmidons fight and kill most of Hector's men inside the temple. Hector confronts Achilles, but he refuses to engage in combat. After explaining that it would be better if their fight took place in front of an audience, Achilles allows Hector to leave. As a result, the Greeks successfully take the beaches of Troy. Achilles returns to his tent to see Briseis, a priestess from the Temple of Apollo and the cousin of Paris and Hector, tied up by his men who found and brought her to him. 
she scolds Achilles for destroying the temple and offending Apollo. But Achilles claims that he has seen the gods and knows them better than the priests, holding a deep disdain for the deities. Achilles becomes fond of Briseis, and Uterus arrives to inform him that Agamemnon was summoning him to prepare for a victory celebration. Upon arrival, as they discuss names that will cross centuries, remembered, and how only kings, not soldiers, have this privilege, Agamemnon had ordered that Briseis be brought to him, thus taking her away from Achilles and leaving him furious. Achilles threatens Agamemnon, stating that if they do not release her, everyone there will die, and he draws his sword. However, Briseis pleads for them to stop, as enough blood had already been shed that day, saying she didn't want anyone to die because of her. Achilles, thus, puts away his sword, but Agamemnon provokes him further by stating that Briseis will satisfy him that night. Even more infuriated by this, Achilles swears to Agamemnon that before his time is over, he will look at Agamemnon's lifeless body and smile, then he leaves. On that same night, King Priam, his sons, and his counselors gather to discuss whether they can win the war against the Greeks. Paris, feeling guilty for causing the war, announces that he will personally challenge Menelaus to a one-on-one -on -one combat the next morning, in exchange for Helen and the city's safety. Before the encounter, Priam encourages Paris to fight for love and presents him with the Sword of Troy, which is said to contain the history of their nation, to help him win. That night, Hector talks to his wife while looking at their baby son. She tells Hector that she doesn't want him to fight anymore, as she needs him with her to raise their child. He insists that he won't fight, and Paris will. However, she contradicts him, arguing that 50,000 Greeks did not cross the ocean just to see Paris fight and decide the war with that, mentioning that she lost seven brothers in the wars against Sparta and couldn't bear to lose him too. Hector goes out to think, and in the corridors, he spots a hooded figure, so he pursues it, only to discover that it's Helen trying to escape the city. She feels guilty for being the reason so many Trojan warriors died that day, but Hector explains that she is now a princess of Troy, and returning to Menelaus won't end the conflict. The next day, with some Trojan soldiers waiting nearby and King Priam with Helen watching from the top of the wall, Hector and Paris meet Menelaus and Agamemnon outside the walls of Troy. Achilles, still furious at losing Briseis, watches from a nearby hill with his troops as Menelaus, Agamemnon, and a large number of Greek soldiers advance toward Troy. Agamemnon confronts Hector and Paris, demanding that they return Helen to Menelaus and submit to his rule. Hector, however, boldly rejects this, and Paris offers to face Menelaus one-on-one, -on -one, hoping it will end the conflict. Agamemnon cares little whether Paris returns Helen to his brother but gives Menelaus the chance for personal vengeance, saying that they would attack Troy regardless. The two prepare, and after some combat advice from his brother, Paris begins his duel with Menelaus. However, Menelaus, experienced in battle and accustomed to killing, strikes fiercely and gains the upper hand over Paris. He eventually leaves Paris lying on the ground, securing his victory. But before Menelaus can kill Paris, he crawls quickly to Hector's feet, no longer wanting to fight. Menelaus demands his complete victory by killing Paris, but Hector says he is his brother and couldn't allow that. So, in trying to strike Paris, Hector quickly eliminates Menelaus instead. Agamemnon, seeing this, becomes furious and orders his army to attack, while Hector quickly sends his wounded brother back and gathers his troops. Achilles, still observing from the mountaintop, insults Agamemnon's inability to control his troops, attacking haphazardly without a clear strategy, disregarding the archers on the walls. In the ensuing battle, Hector manages to kill many Greek soldiers with his strategies, including Ajax, one of the fiercest Greek warriors, proving to be the strongest warrior of Troy. Many other Greek soldiers die, causing Agamemnon and his army to retreat and flee to the Trojan coast. Menelaus' death renders the primary justification for the attack on Troy irrelevant, and Agamemnon struggles to find ways to make his brother's army stay and fight for his cause. Odysseus advises Agamemnon to set aside his doubts and summon Achilles to fight once more, also returning Briseis to him. Agamemnon agrees but mentions that he had given the girl to his men for their entertainment. As the soldiers are about to take advantage of Briseis, Achilles arrives and saves her, taking her back to his tent, where he shows a more reflective side of himself. Later that night, Briseis plans to kill Achilles by holding a knife to his throat while he sleeps. However, instead, she falls in love with him, and they become intimate. The next morning, Odysseus visits Achilles in an attempt to persuade him to fight again for Agamemnon, but he rejects his proposal. To Patroclus' dismay, Achilles decides he's had enough of the war and will leave Troy with Briseis. 
However, Patroclus desires to fight and avenge the deaths of his fellow Greek warriors. After consulting with his advisors, Priam orders Hector to reclaim the Trojan coast and drive the Greeks away before dawn, despite Hector's doubts. The Trojan army, led by Hector himself, attacks the Greeks on the coast as the day breaks. The invasion, however, unites the Greeks and the Myrmidons, led by a warrior believed to be Achilles, who soon joined the battle. In the fight, Hector easily defeats the man believed to be Achilles in a one-on-one -on -one duel, slashing his throat. However, he discovers that it was actually Patroclus pretending to be Achilles. Seeing the young man agonizing, and to end his suffering, Hector gives Patroclus a dignified death, and both armies, exhausted from the battle, decide to take a break. Achilles receives the news of his cousin's death when the Myrmidons return to camp. Furious, Achilles attacks Uterus and swears vengeance against Hector. Later, fearing what may happen to him soon, Hector reveals a secret passage beneath Troy to his wife, Andromache, so she can escape. He instructs her to take their son and any survivors out of the city to the mountains if he dies and the city is destroyed. The next day, as Achilles prepares to leave and seek revenge against Hector, Briseis pleads with him to reconsider, but he ignores her and departs in his chariot. Achilles appears alone, furious, outside Troy, and Hector is challenged to a duel by him. Hector bids farewell to his family, believing that this fight may be his last, and confronts Achilles outside the walls of Troy. Hector suggests before the fight that the winner should grant the loser all the proper funeral rites, but Achilles rejects this. A fierce battle ensues, with powerful blows exchanged using spears and shields. Soon, the use of swords is necessary, and the fight becomes even fiercer, with the clashing of swords ringing out strongly. Achilles already shows signs of an advantage while Hector is visibly tiring. Priam and Paris watch the fight in despair, while Helen consoles Andromache, who can't bring herself to watch. After a fierce battle between the two, Hector is wounded in the shoulder, and Achilles finishes him off with his sword. Afterward, he drags Hector's body onto his chariot and sets off for the Trojan beach, while the other Trojans look on in shock at the loss of a great man that day. When Achilles arrives and enters his tent, Briseis begins to cry for the death of her cousin Hector. That night, King Priam sneaks into Achilles' camp and pleads with him to hand over Hector's body so that a proper funeral can be conducted. Feeling remorseful and sad for his actions, Achilles goes to Hector's body and cries over it, calling him his brother and saying they will meet again soon. Afterward, he places it on his chariot and promises Priam that the Greeks will not attack Troy for twelve days so that Hector's funeral rituals can be performed without interruption. He also allows Briseis to return to Troy with Priam. When Agamemnon learns of Achilles' secret agreement with Priam, he becomes furious and vows to conquer Troy at any cost. After being distracted by a sculpture of a horse that a fellow soldier is creating for his son, Odysseus devises a plan to allow the Greeks to invade Troy during the twelve days of mourning. He has the Greeks build a massive wooden horse as a peace offering and hides their ships in a nearby cove. When the twelve days of mourning end, the Trojans discover the wooden horse on the beach and several bodies in the sand, believing that the Greeks have abandoned the shores. Suspicious of this, Paris urges his father to burn the horse immediately, but after being advised by one of his counselors that it was left as an offering to the sea god Poseidon, Priam overrules Paris's request and brings the horse into the city, where it is revered as a sign of the end of the war, and the entire city celebrates into the night. In the middle of the night, the Greeks, who were hidden inside the horse, including Odysseus and Achilles, emerge, kill the gate guards, and open the gates to allow the other Greek soldiers to enter. The Greek army quickly invades the city, killing people, setting their homes on fire, and eliminating any Trojan warriors who cross their path. King Priam collapses in tears as he watches his beautiful city burn before his eyes. Achilles fights his way through the city while also searching for Briseis. While Andromache guides Helen, Paris, and other Trojans through the tunnel to safety, Paris decides to return to Troy to find his father and Briseis. He entrusts the Sword of Troy to a boy named Aeneas with instructions to protect the remaining citizens and find a new home for them. He persuades Helen to continue the journey with him, promising to come back for her. The Greeks manage to make their way to King Priam's palace, where he is fatally struck from behind by Agamemnon, thus killing him. Achilles continues to search for Briseis, and when Agamemnon sees her, he grabs her and states his intentions to take her to Greece as his slave. However, as he says this, she uses a concealed dagger and fatally stabs him in the neck, thus killing Agamemnon. She is then attacked by the guards, but Ukwuls arrives at that moment and saves her. 
Shortly afterward, Paris arrives also searching for Briseis and, seeing Achilles with her, seizes the opportunity to avenge his brother's death. He shoots an arrow into Achilles' heel and then several more into his body, despite Briseis' pleas for him to stop. As Achilles is dying, he bids farewell to Briseis and asks her to go and escape with Paris to save herself. Even though she is deeply saddened by Achilles' fate, she decides to go as he requested, and he watches her escape with Paris. When the other Greek soldiers arrive, the great warrior Achilles finally passes away. At dawn, Andromache and her baby, Helen, Paris, Briseis, and the other surviving Trojans who managed to escape can be seen heading through the mountains. Briseis looks back with sadness at the distant smoke that remains of her beloved city but soon continues her journey with the others to start their lives anew elsewhere. Troy is finally conquered by the Greeks, and Achilles receives a dignified funeral, with Odysseus personally cremating his body, saying that when they remember him, they should remember him as the man who lived in the time of Hector and Achilles.